Hello everyone and welcome back. Whew, I don't know what to say right now. Wow, wow, wow. What what a crazy day it has been. Um, I didn't actually do that much trading today. Today I sat a lot on the sidelines, so I'm just gonna get that out of the way. I did pre-market trading and then I didn't trade um, for like two hours and I did a little bit of dip trading just now and that was it. Uh, we just had maybe six months, definitely two quarters of very slow action and ranging and trading quick front sides and scalping was the way to go for the last six months. So when I saw a gapper today up 200%, I almost was like a deer in the headlines. I froze a little bit. I was like, I, I don't even know if this is like fake news or if this is real what I'm seeing. So there's two big lessons uh, I learned today. One, yesterday one, Momo was back and today it was confirmed by DWAC, um, was yesterday's big runner, it was today's big runner again, and then PHUN went over a thousand uh, percent today. So Momo is back, that's number one. Not trading today, I clearly or obviously left a lot of money on the table and I know some of you guys in the Discord absolutely killed it, um, but it just, I just wasn't really ready for it. So um, that's a little bit of my fault, but I, I went ahead and analyzed it and uh, any day the, there's a 200% gapper. We got one minute candles over 500,000 volume and it, there's no ticker that's gone exponential yet and the market's heating up. So it's Q4 or Q1. Uh, I got to get a little bit more. I got to get a lot more aggressive and kind of YOLO a little bit more, but I was still kind of in the summer mindset. I was like, yeah, sometimes we get a 60% gapper, but that's pretty much as good as it gets. Uh, so today, Today, I really sat on the sidelines a little bit, um, which is it is what it is. Um, so that's number one. Market is back. Um, number two, since I was sitting on the sidelines today, I did have a chance to um, explore what other traders were doing a little bit. And let me share my screen. I was uh, watching uh, Warrior Trading uh, with Ross Cameron, and I'm, I'm always checking out his recaps. They're really, really good. I highly recommend to anyone that um, is you know learning uh, gap and go trading. He's, he's probably one of the best gap and go momentum traders in this space. And right now it doesn't show Show, but he was streaming in the market, which if you guys are watching this recap, I'm sure you guys know Ross Cameron, so I'm not going to dive into it uh, too much, but he had a two and a half hour stream where he was trading um, DWAC, PHUN, uh, CRTD, uh, PBTS, pretty much everything we were trading, Grom, um, and then he was also trading the warrants on these tickers. So there's something else that I learned today. I actually did not know this. Um, well, first of all, you can go to any ticker and just type in a warrant. Let's say D, uh, DW, not a, any ticker. They have to have um, a warrant, DWAC. Uh, and then, so let's go to DWAC. Now I could type in W. Now I knew this, uh, we trade warrants uh, here and again. The thing I learned today was that warrants do not hold. I didn't know that. Um, I just I don't I rarely trade warrants, uh, so it's not really something I I would know or really come across. Um, but that's kind of why I like the the fact that I kind of took today a little bit off and sat on the back seat a little bit so I could just watch and learn. Um, so that was probably one of the big things I learned today. Um, nothing else I would say is nothing really new. I've been trading for many years. Um, so this is one thing I wanted to share with you guys. And what I like that Ross Cameron did when PHUN and DWAC were just rallying and rallying um, and getting halted and getting halted and they were pretty much impossible to trade, um, there's one thing you could have done and that is basically, I mean, this this move right here, this is a 100% move, absolutely crazy. You could have been trading their warrants, DWACW just by going to W or PHUNW. Uh, um, usually these things don't have that much volume and they're not that fun to trade and it's not really something we're almost ever trading, but if we have a ticker like this that's constantly getting halted, it might be worth trading the warrants. I did not do any warrant trading today. Again, I was just kind of sitting back and watching and seeing what I could learn. But I gotta say, I don't really have any regrets about that um, because I did learn a little bit about warrant uh, trading and just kind of watching Ross Cameron here a little bit. And for me, I think the, the reason I'm really sharing this and, and kind of talking a lot more about the warrants than I feel like maybe is warranted um, is because I don't like trading halts. I've never been a halt trader. Usually when a ticker starts halting, I no longer trade it. And that's why I like trading pre-market so much because there are no halts pre-market. We do see occasional halts pending news pre-market, but it's very rare. Like it happens a handful of times over the course of the year. While after once the market opens, you see halts again and again and again. And pretty much the only thing you saw today was halts. Um, and I hate trading halts. It's just not the way, maybe in like six months or another year from now, um, I'll get used to it. But 
it, it's not something I like. So the, the reason I'm bringing up the warrant so much is if we see another ticker in the future, like PHUN or DWAC getting halted and untradeable, then I'll probably switch over to trading the warrants. I did, that's just the one thing I wanted to share because it was definitely something I learned today. Um, and yesterday I was not a warrant trader at all. So it is something I would put into my playbook for sure. So I wanna share it with you guys. Um, otherwise, let's go to my day trading recap here and. Um, and talk about how things are going. So I had a small profit today. I'm up $573, um, which is a small profit based on my average position size, um, which this month is a little bit slower. I, I realized it's actually my average size is around $11,000. So I, I made like a 5% day, not a bad day, I guess you could say. Um, obviously relative to what you could have made today, um, it's very small, but also relative to what you could have lost today, it's not bad because it was risky out there and it was easy to get in a, get stuck in a flush or a halt. I mean, PHUN sold off 50% just like that in one minute on a halt. So it's it was really risky today and that's why I was really taking the back seat. So again, I don't really have too many regrets. I'm just like, wow, 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 what a crazy day. Let's see what we can learn and then hopefully we'll see more action going forward and I'll be more prepared for that going forward because I have so much summer uh, PTSD where the markets were flat like a lake. So I'll really quickly talk about these tickers, but in a nutshell, I pretty much made all my profits pre-market really, really quickly. And then I went ahead and traded a little bit of backside where I went ahead and gave back all of my profits pre-market and then just made it back, um, I think on, well, I, actually every ticker I just made a little bit back on um, as well. So it was, it was kind of a weird uh, trading day in terms of the second half of the day. I'm also never trading after 11 o'clock. So it was kind of weird that I did that at all, but we were seeing big sell-off. So it was, it was kind of, interesting. All right, like always, I'll talk about my biggest uh, losers first and then go towards my biggest winner. So the biggest loser is PBTS. Man, this ticker got me uh, today. Um, I was just always a few seconds behind on this one. Uh, daily chart, let me let me go here, bottom right, daily chart. We have a lot of resistance at $2, so you know that's a big resistance. Um, Pre-market was in trading, and when everything was, was being halted today, I was just like, man, is there anything else worth trading? And we had a lot of sympathy plays. A lot of these t sympathy plays you gotta be careful with because they're up on no news. People are just trading something just to be trading something because you can't be trading something that's halted, so people are just looking around. So you gotta be careful with these sympathy plays um, and that's that's probably what messed me up being overly careful um, this ticker ran up really quickly from the lows 50 percent and then sold off and i bought into this pullback and all of a sudden i was right on this one um, it spiked up a little bit and i just closed it and i was like "Ugh, that was that was hectic unfortunately the market was so hot today if i just held it would have went i would have you know had a 25 percent green trade um, that's how crazy the market was we just constantly were seeing things that never usually happen or at least don't happen during a slow market and October, which historically is a hot market, has been one of the slowest kind of inconsistent Octobers that I've seen. So that's why I was, you know, really weary. Um, I didn't trade it anymore. I, after that trade, I, I just kind of felt like uh, I, I'm being extremely inconsistent. I need to pretty much just stop trading right now. Um, that's that's what I did until about 11 o'clock. I started trading a little bit again. Now, what I traded pre-market was PHUN and DWAC. So we'll talk about those later. But CRTD popped up um, after the market opened that I traded. I'm up slightly on uh, CRTW, $79. And all I did on this one, this was another sympathy play that I was just about to buy this pull back. I missed my entry. Um, then it went up 50%, but look at these constant flushes on it. So it, you could just be seconds off and just, you know, take a massive loss. Um, I did a little bit of a dip trade on this one, made a small profit, but closed right away. I wanted another dip trade near this $4 big support zone, but I actually forgot to look at it. I should have placed an alert or something would have been reminded. This was a nice 20% bounce. The bounces were really nice. So after 11 o'clock, I did a little bit of fun trading. So PHUN, um, the ticker I'm up, <laughs> the biggest pretty much winner of the day. I'm up uh, $99 on it. Really kind of embarrassing, but it is what it is. So pre-market, uh, this ticker pops up. It's up 230%. I'm freaking out in the Discord. I'm like, guys, we haven't seen a 200% mover in forever. Um, and and it, was, it was so aggressive how this ticker was trading. So I was pretty stoked. Uh, let's go actually to the daily chart because this is just, it's, it's hard to even look at. Um, zoom in a little bit. And we're no stranger to this ticker. This is a ticker we've traded many times in the past. Um, a lot of these big spike days, we'll be trading it. Um, so this, this, I mean, we just went to pretty much all time highs since forever. We had that high of $25, which actually coincidentally is roughly the low of this area. So that's actually kind of an interesting spot to be looking at even a little bit. Let's see if we could zoom in here just for a split second. Uh, let's see, that's, 
Yeah, it's like 28, 25, it's hard to say. There's even a top here, so let's just put it in and let's go all the way back. So actually really interesting how we came up to that $25 zone almost. Um, Okay, let's go back to the daily here. So what I was doing on PHUN was kind of getting scalpy on this ticker. I did a lot of these little trades and this is where I made most of my money um, on this little front side here. Did a little bit of a dip trade, um, gave back some profits and just really scalpy maneuvers um, because you know each each move like this was like 7% and these, this was just quick, quick, quick stuff. And then all of a sudden this ticker just rips on out 30% and I, I just, I don't know what happened. I just became frozen. Like this is stuff that I trained for. This is stuff that um, I'm usually really ready to go and I'm, I'm only waiting for. I'm, I'm really resistant to trading backside and I didn't trade any of this perfect front side here. So if there's one thing I'm kicking myself on the butt for, it's it's not doing that. I gotta say that was really um, not good on my end. Now the fact that I didn't trade any of this into the open, um, I'm not, I don't have any FOMO on. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be totally honest. I have zero FOMO on that because I don't trade halts. It's just not something I like to do. Um, super unpredictable, has nothing to do with what we've been seeing the last six months, um, even longer. So it's just like, it is what it is. Um, I missed it and that's fine. Uh, I've, we've been doing pretty good in the slow market. So um, once we start seeing the market heat up like we are now, I, get, I could get more aggressive again and, and get more aggressive for these hot markets. But I, I just have no... Um, Ill feeling. Now, after 11, I was I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, market's kind of simmering down a little bit. Let's see if we could do a little bit of backside trading. But I knew I didn't want to give back my profits in just one trade because this, you know, every, look at this, this bounce here, guess how much this is? This is like a 70% bounce, which means each red candle is going to be like 10, 20, 30% as well. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just trade with a 10th of my average position size. Um, so I was going in with like 100 shares, you know, I was like up $700, um, or not up $700, I had really, really small share size, just kind of playing around a little bit, seeing if I can get a little bit of a groove going, buying some dips, trying to sell into these pops, and I would win like, you know, uh, 5%, but then I would give it back, win, give it back, it was just constant like, um, I actually, I think on total on all these, I gave back a little bit. Um, and then, you know, somehow it really flatlined, so I didn't trade it anymore. Um, and the same with happened with DWAC, so I'll review it. And well, we could talk about really briefly what I think is going to happen, you know, going on going forward. Um, but DWAC, similar situation. Now this ticker, let's start on the daily again. Let's let's reset because there's just so much to talk about. And if you guys want like a specific video on DWAC or PHUN, I'd be happy to do that. I just want to kind of recap my trading psychology today and um, how I could have been uh, done better, but really focus on, you know, going forward. And that's that's what I like to use these recaps for, um, kind of a learning phase um, after the action. Um, so yeah, big, big, big green day yesterday. It was the talk of the town. When I was reading the news this morning around 7 a.m., um, so many news networks are picking this up. Wall Street Bets was obviously talking about it. Everybody was looking at DWAC. This was really really the big mover let's scroll back here a little bit i i was like okay so pre-market this thing this ticker is running towards um the pre-market highs of 89 dollars again and or the extended hour highs of 89 dollars. so that i traded this little pullback here i made a nice little profit on this one and i was like woohoo a little profit here but look at this this is me this is summer trading summer trading this would have been the way to go um and, but we're not in this really the summer anymore and this thing just pops up 10%. So it coulda, shoulda, woulda held a little bit longer. But um, again, I've conditioned my brain just to like be so anti-holding right now. Um, so it was it was tricky for me to to jump on these uh, moves. Anyway, this, this ticker um, had a bit of a pullback here to $90 pre-market. This would have been a great buy. Um, then it runs up 100% from that. that. That was one buy I was kind of looking to buy, but I didn't do it. Um, sells off tremendously here, 53% uh, before bouncing uh, 44%, absolutely insane. I did, it did get halted down here around 1120, uh, 27 or so. And I was trying to buy in the open, but it started ripping so fast. I only got 10 uh, shares filled, um, but still I got them filled at 71 and pops right to 76. I mean, just how fast this ticker was moving is insane. Um, this bounce right here, was 37%. So I was like, you know, let's just have a little bit of fun here with small size, get a little bit of a groove going, see how it feels. Um, and it was just crazy trading this. I mean, just absurd. I could never trade this with full size. I feel like I'd be totally gambling. And I think that's that's a big reason I didn't trade today because today just felt like a total gamble day. It was just like a slot machine. You could just buy and, you know, God knows what's gonna happen. Um, 
But I got to say, uh, trading backside is always really tough on these kind of tickers. If you do do trading backside, you really want to wait for big time support to come in. Um, otherwise, the front side is the way to go. You just, you know, as long as this ticker has not gone exponential, that's what you want to be waiting for. And that's what I should have been uh, doing. So that's why I said in the beginning of this video, um, here's a little bit of a checklist. If it tickers up 100%, 200%, basically anything north of 100%, if it's a first or second green day, if it has over 1 million shares um, trading or one um, um, 500,000 shares uh, trading on a one minute candle. If it has yet to go exponential, which I think I just said, and, and so on and so forth, and it's you know has a good catalyst, uh, people are talking about it, those are the tickers you wanna kinda YOLO on, get more aggressive on. Um, obviously, risk management is always my biggest focus, um, but if we see it, I have to be getting more aggressive on these, and, and today really shed light on that um, more than anything. And once the market opens and everything starts halting, I could start trading those warrants, um, which is a little bit uh, more my wheelhouse, something I'm a little bit more comfortable with. So um, those are kind of two big takeaways from today. And just to wrap up this video, guys, um, October has been, uh, was it was such a slow month for me. It was pretty much the first uh, two weeks were totally break even. Um, then I had a nice uh, green streak. I did break that green streak yesterday um, on my day trading uh, portfolio. But so far, we're, we're up like six, $7,000 for October. Nothing really too crazy, but for the fact that I'm trading about $10,000 position sizes, I'm up 70% this month based on my average position size. So that's really not too bad. Um, day trading, you can see here, we had that red day yesterday, so a small green day will be uh, today. Uh, and then yesterday, we closed that swing, those swing trades uh, that I talked about in yesterday's recap video. We uh, closed two swing trades, and I, I'm gonna be closing coin, hopefully in the next rally, um, as long as cryptocurrency will close. So hopefully that's going to be a nice green trade as well, uh, swing trade. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The day trading recap or the day trading um, calendar and the swing trading calendar and then the combined calendar of the two. Um, yeah, guys, that's all for this video. And remember, if you want to check out any of these, you can do so. Just go to my portfolio um, or my profile, uh, tradejournal.co forward slash Winkler, and you guys can see all of my portfolios that we discussed in this video for free. All right, guys, good luck to anyone still trading. I cannot wait for Monday. I think it's gonna be, whew, we're gonna have a lot of leftover uh, plays. We're gonna have a lot of sympathy plays. We're gonna have probably a lot of support zones um, that are bouncing, like DBWAC, if it pulls into more support, like let's say around 50 or the low 60s, I think we're gonna see more and more bounces. So um, I don't think this is the end of DWAC. I don't really think this is the end of PHU. Um, I mean, a thousand uh, percent plus day on this ticker, absolutely insane. Um, this ticker doesn't usually hold its highs super well, um, but it does have these kind of multi-day runners, uh, multi-week runners. So I think PHUN, we could see a lot more of, um, but I'd be really careful buying anything, um, honestly, above like 650 or so. I would wait for maybe a pullback below six um, if you were looking to swing trade or something like that. But um, yeah, for me, I'm just gonna be day trading these. I'm not gonna be holding overnight. So I'll see you guys then Monday morning have a great weekend guys definitely get some relaxing in let the, let the water sell, settle a little bit and let's get refreshed here for monday morning so on that note don't forget to drop a like on the way out easiest way to support the channel subscribe if you're new we'd love to have you part of the community like always guys stay safe and make some awesome trades ciao ciao